Our Melbourne-based fund management uh, Durostat Capital has delivered its highest quarterly return in 10 years over the March quarter, as it profited from the surge in market volatility in Australia and overseas markets. Now, this solid return placed it amongst the top performing hedge funds for the March quarter, according to research group Eureka Hedge. Now, for more on his thoughts of where to profit from here, we're joined by Craig Racine, Management Director at Durostat, and he's joining us live via Skype from Melbourne. Thanks for joining us today, Craig. Uh, these excellent results aside, uh, what have you really been able to take away from such a volatile march from your learnings on the market? Uh, well, I think the major thing is uh, we've for 10 years always had protection in place. So um, no matter what, uh, our specialist skill uh, for 10 years maximum drawdown 2.2%. Beyond then, uh, our, uh, our income, we can always pass through the dividends from our holdings. And we've designed the fund in such a way that the returns will increase um, with increasing levels of market volatility, as you can see there. Um, so essentially, there's a left tail, which did very well last month, a right tail, for example, which did very well after the election in Australia, and then more generally um, specific uh, international and uh, ASX or international assets that do well as they move in either direction. So we've, it's really to do with the fund design that we have, um, a lack of highly defensive assets, and to see returns more elevated as volatility goes up, but always protecting the capital. Is that to say that you use volatility products? We've talked a lot about them in recent weeks. Have you been using these instruments in your portfolio to actually increase your returns? And is that why it's been such a positive mark? Um, well, there's two real components in there. Um, the first is about 95% of the money will go into about 20 assets. So non-diversified, diversified, uh, uncorrelated. So for example, it's the ASX 20 stocks, the index, uh, the uh, S&P 500, uh, the NASDAQ, MSCI developing, de developing markets, etc. And about 5% of the money then goes into the lowest cost options. Um, so it's a bought option type strategy. Uh, and what we're able to do is the key drivers of performance is as the market gaps, we take very quick profits and we close it down in either direction. I can see you've got a slide up there. So essentially those assets are ranked based on fundamentals and technicals. And you can see some have got a downside tail, which have done quite well um, recently. Others are set as a V shape. And others, for example, the Australian banks right now have got more of an upside tail in there. So we are always ensuring under the hood, we've got each of those three type profiles in place. So we're not actually predicting, it's more letting the market volatility itself generate those returns and always having very little at risk. Now, as far as the 20 assets you invest in, you must watch these quite closely and rebalance accordingly. Which of these are you most optimistic about? Are you most optimistic about assets here in Australia, about some in Asia, in the US? Where do you think that next growth phase will be? Uh, for us, the criteria is really just looking at the realised volatilities in the stocks and how much they, they move around. So my sense of that is the indexes themselves, whether they be the ASX uh, or the um, probably the S&P, uh, NASDAQ, uh, are, are moving around a lot more. Um, so that's where we make our profits. And the idea of there being some disappointing news or results and them falling down, we tend to take some profits, rebalance the portfolio. Then some sort of stimulatory measures uh, or uh, people buying the dip, we then tend to make uh, profits on the upside. So it's like an asset turnover play. We don't touch the underlying stock itself, but we're rebalancing those options with market moves. Um, that rebalancing tends to take somewhere between a three to 4% move now in the underlying asset. So, uh, and that's, that's what we do. So I suspect we'll see it in the indexes. Uh, specifically, we'll probably um, see it maybe maybe in the commodities, maybe in the banks. We're in all those major sectors. And just as you see those rotations in and out of sectors, uh, that's a key source of profits for us. But fortunately, to your question, we don't actually have to predict which, what that will be, only that it'll happen. Craig, 
Uh, so you like volatility. You've been quite pleased with all this volatility since. Volatility um, is our friend. That's the thing. Yeah. So, so do you anticipate this volatility uh, is going to continue? What is your world view right now? I think it's extremely likely that um, there'll be substantial volatility and probably for the next three to five years, I would have thought. Um, um, historically, the market tends to have five years of fairly stable conditions and then five years of more volatile um, environment. And you can see from our returns, for example, they started to accelerate in about 2018 when the volatility started to pick up as we're in the more late cycle phase. Given what's going on in the real economy and in the uh, stock market itself, with whether it be stimulus or poor earnings results, uh, I think you're just at the start of that and all sorts of restructuring. So we think that's extremely good conditions for how we've um, designed our fund. On the flip side, though, let's just say that volatility doesn't return. We've still got the VIX trading in the 30s, albeit much lower than its high in the 70s. And the local Australian VIX measure, that's now in the 20s. It reached almost 50 during the peak panic in March. Now, if volatility does subside, won't this, in effect, have quite a detrimental effect to your portfolio? Um, well, the re essentially, if you look at the um, three criteria that we run the portfolio, the protection would stay the same, so as a highly defensive. Our investors would still receive their regular income, um, so because we pass through the dividends, particularly from those ASX 20. And more importantly, they've addressed those consequences uh, in case the market does fall. So um, our returns would undoubtedly be lower. And you can see when you started the interview, those performance um, reports, um, our returns were lower as volatility gets lower. Um, that said, we were still running consistently at eights, nines or thereabouts from about 2018, uh, which is substantially higher than the other alternatives there um, uh, without taking on credit risk or illiquidity. Craig, we've seen, uh, we've seen NAB significantly cut its dividend. We um, have not heard the same from Westpac yet. ANZ reports tomorrow. Um, do you think that we'll see a prolonged period of lower dividends coming from some of these traditional income plays here in Australia? I think so. Um, we can um, imply what the dividends may be by looking at the way the options are priced and um, what they're pricing. Uh, certainly as at uh, uh, close of business yesterday was for ANZ around uh, 30 cents and Westpac actually a little lower than that. Um, so that pricing has been varying a little bit. Um, for your more technical expert, you can look at the pricing of the May uh, more deep in the money um, put options. Mm -hmm. So that's certainly what's priced in. And you can do the same if you want to look at a November and December series. And they've also there's already there been substantial cuts priced in, in the market. So I think that's quite likely. All right. Well, we appreciate your insight into both the global and the local market this morning, Craig Racine there, and we'll speak to you again soon.